Walt Disney's Little Man of Disneyland. Patrick Begora woke up one bright morning feeling very fine. He fixed himself a bit of breakfast and set out for his morning stroll. When he came to the doorway of his snug small house at the roots of an old orange tree, Patrick stretched his arms and swelled his chest for a breath of fresh morning air. Then he lit his pipe. But the pipe almost fell out of his mouth, and his arms froze straight out in the air. So shocked was he at the sight he saw. There were people in his orange grove, big people striding around as if they owned the place. Well, Patrick Bagora was not the last of the little people left in all of movie land for nothing. He had courage, did Patrick Bagora, so he stepped right up to those big people to find out what this was about. At first, they wouldn't even look at him, but Patrick took care of that. He stamped down hard right on the foot of one. Ow! cried Donald Duck. I've been stung. Must be bees around here. He looked down then. What's this? he cried. Who in the world are you? Who are you yourself is the proper question, said Patrick Begora right back. This is my home after all, has been these many years. And what, may I ask, are you doing here, acting as if you own the place, without so much as a by your leave from Patrick Begora, which is me? Who are we? cried Donald Duck. Don't you go to the movies? Don't you watch TV? Don't you read books or newspapers? Don't you know Goofy and Pluto? Don't you know Donald Duck? No, said Patrick, and he blew a smoke ring right in Donald's face. My name is Mickey Mouse, sir, said one of the other big people, stooping down to hold out his hand. So this is your home here, Mr. Begora? That it is said Patrick Begora, and I'd like a little peace and quiet. I'll thank you all to leave at once. Well, said Mickey, I'm afraid we can't do that. You see, we're going to start building here soon, going to move all these old trees. Move these trees? Start building here? cried Patrick Begora, jumping up and down in a purple rage. Oh, no, you don't. Not while I'm around. And what can you do to stop us, little fellow? asked Donald Duck with a chuckle, leaning on his shovel in a cocky way. I'll show you, said Patrick with a snap of his fingers, and down in a heap went Donald Duck, for his shovel handle had splintered just like that. What happened? cried Donald, picking himself up. Let that be a lesson to you, said Patrick Begora. Ah, don't mind him, said Goofy. Let's start digging up these trees. And what was it you had planned to build here? Some sort of a school, perhaps? asked Patrick. No, a wonderful place called Disneyland, said Mickey, with all sorts of marvelous things for fun. A rocket trip to the moon, for one, and a wonderful Wild West stagecoach ride, a magic pirate ship that can really fly, and a trip to the mine of the seven dwarfs. Rocket trip? Flying pirate ship? You must be out of your mind, my boy, said Patrick Begora. There are no such things. Come along and see. We'll show you the plans. They're back at the studio, said Mickey Mouse. Before he knew what he was about, Patrick Begora found himself walking along with Mickey and the rest. But he stopped short when they opened a door into a strange looking bubble of glass. Oh, no, you don't, he cried in alarm. I'm not going there. What is it anyway? It's a helicopter, a kind of airplane. Come along for the ride, said Mickey. When he saw all the rest of them piling in, Patrick Begora went too. Soon, with a whir and a rush of blades, up went the helicopter, straight up in the air, and the ground dropped away below. My, but you should have heard Patrick yell then. He had never dreamed of such a thing. But soon he was so busy watching the sights as they flew over oil wells and city streets and towering brown hills that he had no time to be scared. 
Then down they swooped to the studio, and soon Patrick found himself deep in Disneyland plans, the likes of which he had never seen. There were rows of pretty little shops, winding rivers, an overhead railroad train, so many wonderful things to see that Patrick's head was spinning. And this is what you're planning to build when you root up my orange trees? he asked. Yes, said Mickey. That's our plan. Then go ahead, lads, if you can, said Patrick Bagora. The place is yours. There's just one little thing I ask. May I build a wee snug little house and live there quietly after you've finished this Disneyland? Fine, said Mickey. We'll build you the house. How about one of these? No, lad, no, said Patrick Bagora. I like a place out of sight, hidden away, so to speak. All right, said Mickey, just as you say. So they shook hands on it. The bargain was made. They all flew back to the Disneyland site, and next morning the work began. Every day Patrick came out to watch, and with every day that passed, it seemed the picture changed. One day the railway station went up, the entrance to Disneyland. Then almost in the blink of an eye, Main Street was taking shape. Soon it was time for the last tree to come out, the one with Patrick's home at its roots. Sorry, Pat, said Mickey. It's got to go, but we'll find you a good new place. Don't bother, said Patrick. I've picked one myself. But he would not say where his new house was. He trundled out his household goods in his wee wheelbarrow, and all day he sat in the barrow's shade. And at night, when everyone had gone home, Patrick wheeled his wee barrow through the shadows of Disneyland to the secret spot he'd picked for his home. So when you visit Disneyland, keep your eyes open wide. Maybe you'll see a wee man in green smoking a small clay pipe. Maybe you'll follow him when he goes home and find out where he lives. If you do, you'll be the only one in the world who's found Patrick Bagora's home. The End This Read Aloud has been brought to you by Time to Read to Us. Hit the subscribe button for more kid-friendly read-alouds. Thanks for watching!